Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is David Novak. I've been reading The History of the Crusades by Stephen Runciman, a three-volume set, and The Gulag Archipelago by Alexander Solzhenitsyn, also a three-volume set. And I was going to intersperse the volumes. It being my habit of the past year and a half to read a book of fiction followed by a book of nonfiction. And I was under the mistaken assumption that Solzhenitsyn's book was fiction. It's not, it's nonfiction. So that means I'm ending up reading six volumes of nonfiction straight, uh, unless I decide to bail on the Solzhenitsyn, which there are good reasons perhaps to do so. Uh, but as it stands, I've read one volume of each, and I plan to make my way ahead. But what that means is when I finish these books, I will have a de deficit of six fiction books. And that doesn't sit well with me. So I'm going to do my version of the 500 book challenge, um, instead, which is a, a, a booktube challenge uh, wherein... Booktubers will read 500 books that they already own before buying another book. Now, in my case, I'll make it six, and I won't prohibit myself from buying another book in the interim, but I will try to read six books of fiction that I already own. And so today, the purpose of this video is just to show you a smattering of possibilities. This is not exhaustive. I do have other books of fiction here and there, um, but these are more or less the pile of possibilities that I'm working with. This is A Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court by Mark Twain. I read his Prince and the Pauper last year and found it to be a flawless masterpiece. Um, so, that, that makes this a possibility, but not a likely one, uh, because one of, the, one of the biases or slants that I want to put towards this group of reading, is, readings is authors of color, as the phrase goes nowadays, or authors from the global south. And Mark or Samuel <laughs> does not qualify. This one I'm on the fence about, however. Um, the evening reader, Priscilla, at her channel, has praised this book and, and, and given it the award of being the most reread book uh, of all her books. It's, it's, it's up there with um, Lonesome Dove, in her estimation. Well, I don't own Lonesome Dove, but I do own this now. And... I've heard so many people talk about it. I think uh, Grix, et cetera, also has had a video about this book on his channel. So I'm, I, I really want to read this, but I'm not sure if I should hold off until next year's June on the Range, a, a booktube event, uh, when I will be able to fit in. Although I'm, I'm, I do fairly poorly at trying to accommodate my uh, reading to external structures in large part because I, I wind up going so slow. Now, this book was mentioned by Britta Bowler on her channel, and it looks interesting. Uh, the author is comes a little bit later than uh, Mulkraj Anand, who, of whom I've read two novels very recently, and I thought it might be nice to uh, read a, uh, a woman's perspective on things. And this looks very interesting. So this is definitely a possibility. Uh, now, going against the rule of a white author, but, but I suppose fitting some kind of slot in, in it being a female author is this book, which I snagged at the charity shop recently. I've been keeping my eye out for this for a long time, and you would think it would be easy to come by, but it has not been. So I really want to read this because I've never read Wharton, and uh, it's 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 a lack that I feel real conscious of, because so many booktubers in particular 
speak very highly of this author. And if, if I do read that and I like it, I, I have this, which has been sitting on my shelf for a while, four novellas. Nobody talks about this one, so it's, it's much less likely. Um, now, of my favorite authors, you have Claude McKay. This was a uh, lost manuscript uh, for a good number of years, and, and Penguin reprinted it, which is very nice of them, um, or, or printed it for the first time even, it's possible. Um, McKay is one of my favorite authors, but that's for his poetry, and I've tried reading other of his novels, uh, Banjo and uh, Banana Bottom or something, and just did not care for them so much. So, but if this, is, if this is good enough for Penguin, it might be good enough for me. And if that's the case, though, if I'm going to read McKay, why don't I read the big bombshell with him, which is Amiable with Big Teeth. Now, this was not only a, a book that was lost, it was a book that nobody even knew existed. And it's that rarity of rarities, a, a Penguin hardback, which... I was so excited to get when it came out and perhaps should not have because I think I have seen it since in the dollar bin, if you will. But I, I, I might choose this one ahead of the other just because it, it was such a big deal when it came out. So that's a possibility. Now, another a book that's been on my radar for a little while is this one. And I think some booktuber that I've been following mentioned it, but I cannot remember who. And this fits nicely with um, my present yearning to read more short stories. Uh, I recently read um, The Night of the Living Res, and Short stories are something I have tended to shy away from, but I liked that very much. And this is, I, I believe, interrelated short stories. So it's something I very much have my eye on. This I show you just because I've had it for a while and um, I would like to read it one day. Uh, I Served the King of England is a wonderful movie. I've seen the movie a couple of times. I would love to see it again. And I just can't imagine that the book could be as good as the movie. But I do have the book, and uh, it's, it's a possibility, although uh, it being written by a Czech author, I believe, um, he, he will not fit either of the prerequisites of um, Global South or Person of Color. Now... I have Steinbeck. I have a couple of other Steinbecks, but uh, to be honest, no booktuber ever has made Steinbeck sound like an author that I want to read. Um, possibly I will read him at some point, but not likely. Now, this is, is, is also a good possibility. Yi Mun Yol. I don't, don't know the exact pronunciation of that, but it's called The Poet, um, and I've had this uh, for a while. I uh, picked it up at the Heritage Museum in Chicago. There was some sort of a special fundraiser dinner or something, and they were getting rid of the, the books in their library, and I picked this one up. And I, I don't know much about the story, but I have read this one a couple of years ago. By the same author. This is a short novel. Um, I, I love the, the, the jacket. It's a, a beautiful book. Let's see. Uh, the, 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 the book, the binding itself is, 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 is okay, but the, the jacket is wonderful. And the, the story is very good if you're looking for something short to read. So, so Yi Mun Yol, the poet, is definitely a possibility. Now this, everybody's read this except me. Um, I've had it, and this, I think, would be a very good time for me to read this. Um, so that's, that's very much a possibility for me. Now, 
speaking of African authors, this is a um, white African author. I also have a book by him titled Disgrace, which I believe is the book that you really should read by him. I've read several books of his literary criticism. There's one about censorship, and I liked those very much. I've never tried his fiction. And if I read him, I think Disgrace would be the right one to start with, but I don't know where it is at the moment. It would require some hunting to find. The, the negative to that is I believe it focuses around a writer or a, a teacher or some, a, you know, a college teacher, something like that. And uh, those kind of stories tend, tend not to please me that much. Uh, now we're getting into some, some meaty stuff soon. I have New York Review of Books books coming up. So that's a little teaser. I've got a few things first to show you. I don't know anything about this, but it's, it's a, apparently a classic. And it's short stories, so, so that's good. Although, I, with a name like Heinrich von Kleist, he sounds pretty European to me. So we'll see. Now this book, this is a possibility. I, um, I heard about this book. Uh, well, this author had a subsequent book out that was making the rounds on BookTube. And a BookTuber that I followed avidly mentioned this book in passing, and I happened to come upon it that very day in my neighborhood book box, and so I snatched it. So this is, this is very definitely a good, strong possibility for me, although that booktuber sadly seems to have ceased making booktube videos. I guess it's a thing which happens sometimes. Now, this is, this is um, under the imprint of Penguin Classics, and I don't know if it's really a classic, but I, my impression is that it's a very good yarn. Um, I, of course, saw the movie when I was young, and I even somehow bought the soundtrack album. I think it's Korngold. Did it, and I don't think it's available anymore. But I picked this up uh, last year after reading Anthony Hope's uh, *Prisoner of Zenda*, which I really enjoyed. It's a light read, but it's it's one thing after another. It's 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 a the most exciting adventure. Um, you know, in the in the end, comparatively, *The Prince and the Pauper*, which works on the same theme, *The Prince and the Pauper* is definitely a classic. But this was a real fun yarn, as I say. So, uh, not this. The, the Prisoner of Zenda was. Uh, so I'm hoping that this, uh, by Raphael Sabatini, would be as good as The Prisoner of Zenda. We'll see. Uh, so, last on the classics list, which I'm sure is a, a no-go for me, but I just thought I'd pull them out and show them because I have them. And these are uh, by Stendhal. Um, one is the, uh, the red and the black, and one is scarlet and black. Kind of odd that a, an author would write two books with such similar titles, don't you think? Uh, at any rate, I do want to get to these in the, in the future, if I may. Uh, actually, one is simply a translation by Roger Gard, and one is a translation by Margaret Shaw. Personally, I think The Red and the Black is the better title, uh, in English at least, but we'll see. Now, here, here we get to the New York Review of Books, and I'm not, uh, I'm not a huge fan of New York Review of Books, books, but I have them, and pulling them out and looking at them some of them seem pretty apropos uh, to what, what I've been reading recently. Now, now, not this one particularly. This one might do for um, the war buffs this month in, uh, during the event BookTube at War. My understanding is it's something of a prose poem. It deals with the First World War. And I've, I've just never read it, but 
it's it's not super long, about 200 pages, and now that I am stepping up my reading, I think I could handle this. So it's, it's a possibility, though not perhaps likely. In parenthesis by David Jones. I suppose I should say the titles. Now, this one, The Siege of Krishnapur, I, I have no idea why I have this book. I must have found it for cheap. Um, India, 1857, the year of the Great Mutiny, when Muslim soldiers turned in bloody rebellion on their British overlords. This time of convulsion is the subject of J.G. Farrell's The Siege of Krishnapur, widely considered one of the finest British novels of the last 50 years. So it's a British novel, and uh, Mary McCarthy has good things to say about it on the back. Though I, I find that um, I would rather read about India by an Indian author than by a white male British author at this point. Uh, I read Kim by Rudyard Kipling when I was a boy, and I don't think I will revisit it. It, it was a lovely read for me at that time, but I think it is time to move on. Now these other books, these two particularly, Look at this. I have no idea. I, I must actually have been thinking about reading this author at one time. I don't know why, because they, 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 I, I must have ordered them. Uh, so, uh, Soul by Andrei Platonov and The Foundation Pit by the same author. And he is a Soviet writer. So let me read you a little bit of this. In the foundation pit, a team of workers has been given the job of digging the foundation of an immense edifice, a palatial home for the perfect future that they are convinced is at hand. But the harder the team works, the deeper they dig, the more things go wrong and it becomes clear that what is being dug is not a foundation, but an immense grave. The Foundation Pit is Platonov's most overtly political book, written in direct response to the staggering brutalities of Stalin's collectivization of Russian agriculture. It is also a literary masterpiece. Seeking to evoke unspeakable realities, Platonov deforms and transforms language in pages that echo both with the alienating doublespeak of power and the stark simplicity of prayer. So that sounds pretty good. And uh, let me read from Seoul. The Soviet writer uh, Andrei Platonov saw much of his work suppressed or censored in his lifetime. In recent decades, however, these lost works have reemerged, and the eerie poetry and poignant humanity of Platonov's vision have become ever more clear. He was the writer who most profoundly registered the spiritual shock of revolution. So, sounds good. I would, my, my game plan, I think, would be to start with the shorter book, and if I really loved it, to read the second book. Now, this one, lo and behold, it's another Soviet-themed book. One cold Moscow night, Comrade Tulayev, a high government official, is shot dead on the street, and the search for the killer begins in this panoramic vision of the Soviet Great Terror. Oh, I should have started the sentence with, in, the, in this panoramic vision of the Soviet Great Terror, the investigation leads all over the world netting a whole series of suspects whose only connection is their innocence, at least of the crime of which they stand accused. But the case of Comrade Tulayev, unquestion unquestionably the finest work of fiction ever written about the Stalinist purges, is not just a story of a totalitarian state. 
marked by the deep humanity and generous spirit of its author, the legendary anarchist and exile Victor Serge, or is it Serge? It is also a classic 20th century tale of risk, adventure, and unexpected nobility to set beside Ernest Hemingway's For Whom the Bell Tolls and Andre Malraux's Man's Fate. So that also sounds really good after dealing with the Gulag Archipelago. This one is 20,000 Streets Under the Sky. It's big, and that does not recommend it to me. Um, and it Let's see what it has to say. Patrick Hamilton may be best, best known now for the plays Rope and Gaslight and for the classic Alfred Hitchcock and George Cukor movies they inspired. But in his heyday, he was no less famous for his brooding tales of London life, featuring a Dickensian cast of pub crawlers, prostitutes, low lives, and just plain losers who are looking for love or just an ear to bend. Hamilton's novels are a triumph of deft characterization, offbeat humor, unlikely compassion, and raw suspense. In recent years, Hamilton has undergone a remarkable revival with his champions, including Doris Lessing, David Lodge, Nick Hornby, and Sarah Waters. It is a tale of obsession and betrayal that centers on a seedy pub in a rundown part of London. Bob, the waiter, skimps and saves and fantasizes about writing a novel until he falls for the pretty prostitute Jenny and blows it off. It does not sound all that appealing to me. Uh, pub novels, novels about uh, would-be novelists, eh. But so, so, so there you have it. Um, and the last book, which is, is definitely not going to be read at this time, uh, but it's Vasily Grossman, which I picked up whilst or after I was reading Life and Fate uh, some years back, and I, I wanted more by him. And this is a combination. I believe there are short stories and letters, and it, it may be worth uh, checking into after the Soviet experience. I, I guess I'll, I'll vacillate on that. I'll, I'll keep that as an option. So I really don't know what I'm going to choose as my six novels, or if I scrap the Gulag Archipelago, it will be four novels. But th these are the novels I will draw from. Uh, if you have read any of them uh, or know anything about the authors uh, and would like to leave a comment, I would be very appreciative of that. Uh, so with that, I bid you farewell. Thank you very much for stopping by.